congratulations on the huge release, uh, like after all the years of work. Uh, how far back does it go? Like when did you become aware of Connor and start uh, following him for the documentary? Uh, I suppose initially I met him back in 2012. So this is when he was fighting on, on local shows and Cage Warriors and, um, you know, no, basically nobody, nobody knew him. But uh, there was something about him that, that the first time you were speaking to him and that just made you want to listen to him. He, he's, he's got this infectious self-belief. And, uh, you know, he's, he, even the first interview we did with him, he was talking about um, watching gorillas on the Nature Channel and observing their movement. And, you know, that's not a kind of question or answer you'd expect to hear from, from a fighter. So it was something different and immediately captivating. Mm. And, and I, uh, just from a production point of view, I, I was like many, I saw him in the late light. That was where my <laughs> first, and everyone remembers him from the late light, you know, it was such a, you know, you know he was just, you know, everybody was like, who is this guy, you know? And it was so Irish, you know, to be unapologetically confident, brazen, you know, he had it, had it all, you know, it was just, yeah, I just thought it was immediately, you know, so they, I, I knew Gav and Gav came in and said, look, you know, I'm working with Connor, will we pitch it to RTE? It was the easiest commission we've ever had. I think uh, we pitched it on a Tuesday and I think we had a commission on a Wednesday, which, you know, in, in RG terms, that's kind of unheard of, you know. Yeah. So, so uh, and then we, we worked with Connor ever since then, so it's four, four and a half years. And his, fame, his fame just skyrocketed, you know. It, yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't, it was literally overnight, you know, he was just getting bigger and bigger. And, and the crazy thing is he continues to get bigger, mm -hmm. you know. Like now it's, uh, the, the man needs no introduction and people are absolutely shocked that you know Conor McGregor, yeah. you know. He changed how we dress. People yeah. in Ireland dress differently now because of Conor McGregor. Yeah. It, like Zara, you know, suddenly we're doing ranges of three piece suits, you know, and they're yeah. flying out the door, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, like in that way, I, I don't think there's anybody who had been so culturally effective, you know, m making people, you know, you know, suddenly take pride in their appearance, you know. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it's just uh, he's a mad story. Would well, well, you think uh, being a celebrity has changed him, or in the time you've been with him, is he about the same as when you started filming him? Yeah, uh, I think I think Connor's. You know, very much the same, the same person, but things around you change. The and and even the more famous he he, he gets, you know, it, it it's a quite an operation now for him to go to the shop. You know, <laughs> there's 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 all these cars. There's suit men. There's security. There's you know, it, it's it's got to there. And um, you know, I think I think in Ireland, uh, in in particular, you know, I think he keeps to himself a bit more because if he goes out, you know, it's basically a riot. He him. can't go down Grafton Street anymore. You know, mm -hmm. so the world around, you know. His world has changed, not, not undoubtedly. Well, like you're following someone during this part of their life when they're becoming so much more famous. And like, I was wondering, like, even from the beginning, how do you establish trust with someone that you're going to follow them for a documentary? Because it seemed like you had pretty intimate access to him. Yeah, uh, well, I, I, think, I think, first of all, probably Connor, Connor knew more than anybody else that he was going to be this guy. You know, he, he undoubtedly told us, I'm going to have 25 million in my bank account. I'm going to be a world champion in the UFC, all this stuff. So he wanted to, that to be filmed, you know. So, so uh, we, 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 we had a good relationship with him. You know, he, 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 he stays true to the, the team and people who ran him from the start. So we were in there early and, uh, and he we just you know, kept, kept us around. But it, it, it's funny, yeah, like um, he, he's quite involved. You know, like you know, Connor knows what he wants in a film and, and that's not saying he's, he's he's driving it you know from in terms of you can do this you can't do that you know but like and, and connor's quite happy to show himself not at his best moments and you know i suppose that you know usually when when, when you know there's docs you maybe might be quite reticent about showing parts of yourself but connor kind of knows that that's part of the the appeal of him you know show as much of yourself as you can you know so 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 yeah that, that trust and but that trust is built up it's not built up over you know two or three months it is built up over you know the guts of five years uh, and and look it has gotten harder connor has gotten to that level now where there are it's just very hard to to to, to maybe get those those that intimacy that access that, that maybe we had in the beginning but that's why Gavin and Graham, all what they do is they literally bed in, they move in, you know, they, they spend months on end, you know. Uh, Gavin has, how many trips to Vegas in the last? Two? Uh, I've, I've been to Vegas in total 11 times, so. Yeah, yeah. so uh, <laughs> yeah. and they're long stints, so like and 10, I, 12 weeks at a time, you know. I'm not, I'm not a fan of Vegas, so. <laughs> I, I was thinking you got a lot of footage of his training, and like, what's it like uh, knowing what to get, and knowing like when you've got enough footage and like, like certainly as well when filming that there'd be moments like where he tells you to get the camera out of his face and like so like how do you like approach working in that environment and um, well when it comes yeah training i mean that moment where we did actually capture his and you can hear his acl 
uh, popping uh, on, on camera. You know, we wouldn't have got that if we weren't filming every round. So, so we, we, we keep filming, we keep filming. And um, he likes to look back at stuff as well. He likes to look back at his training exactly, stuff like yeah, that. So, yeah. so he wants everything filmed, but then every even again, that just goes back to what a you know, hard working athlete he is. He's a hard worker in the gym, but he's a hard worker in terms of tactician and technically, and he likes to watch back what he's done, what you know, what he can prove upon. So, so you know, it, it worked twofold. We got uh, amazing access to main material, but he got a uh, you know, round the clock uh, cover of his, of his training, which he wanted, you know. But you got. Uh very cinematic footage of the fights as well, like with the slow motion and the sound mixing. And like, I, I do martial arts myself, so mm. I was wincing at the blows that were landing. And like, I was wondering what it was like approaching uh, those scenes and filming the cage fights. Uh, so, so that, 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 that's in the editing, really. You know, Andrew Hearn uh, did a great job of, of, uh, of cutting those fights together. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's great creative space to kind of just tell the story of a fight, you know. TV coverage is very flash and, you know, and be, being there, the you, you want it to feel like you're there and then just cutting away to his family, even watching it makes it more real. So that, that was just brilliant to, to work with that footage. And yeah. One thing that struck me about it was uh, you got such clear audio on John Kavanagh and like that was ringside. Like, mm -hmm. I, and like the, the, that was a very important moment to well, capture, I thought. In, in fairness, influence, like. the, the, the UFC are a very slick operation. So, so what they, they run a, a, their own productions when you're in, in around the octagon. No third party cameras are, are allowed in there. But what they have is they have nearly 16 cameras filming for their live feed. They use a fraction of it. So what, what we asked for was we want every ISO angle that was not used, you know, so people have, so we, 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 we try, so it just gave us latitude to, to, to cut the films quite cinematically. A lot of it was done in the mix as well. We, you know, you, you could really, you know, get mm. creative in the mix. And yeah, stuff it was good as well. use of sound. Yeah, yeah. so, so, so trying, trying to get that balance and the balance of music as well and stuff. So uh, yeah, that was the approach. It's, it's gladiators. It's yeah. <laughs> I suppose one, one aspect uh, you could have touched on in terms of his, like notorious public image is uh, the feuds and the trash talking, and l l like there would have been stuff recently about like using slurs as part of the trash talk, and like there's this context to trash talk where you're emasculating your opponent, but then there's like a broader context of what you're saying, and I, th I think people like like he's he's a divisive figure in that sense. So mm -hmm. I was wondering, sort of, wh why didn't you explore that in the documentary, or if you had anything to say now? What do you, why do you think? What like what drives Connor to sort of keep? Himself well, well, well I, I, like I suppose on on the on the trash talk side, look, I suppose you know uh, that is you know it's it's probably the most viewed material of Conor McGregor. So we we, we try to take a different approach, with, 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 you know, and, and dial it back a little bit and show the the the, the, the man and, and and you know what he goes through to get to where he gets to, you know. But of course, it's part of it. I've seen Conor McGregor beat opponents outside the octagon. I remember um, uh, what's his name. Um, Dustin Poirier at a press conference, you know, literally started the press conference like this. By the end of the fight, he was like this, the shoulders had sagged and he was in himself. Connor had, you know, literally, so he, he does it and it works. You know, obviously there's, you know, occasion where he, he oversteps the mark, you know, but like. It doesn't lend itself to delicate uh, wordplay at times. No, like, no. But, yeah. yeah, but I mean, like after a press conference or whatever else the encounter, Connor's backstage and, and we're there with him and he's incredibly relaxed, you know, like, it's heightened out there. And then he's back here and he's himself again. So we wanted to focus on seeing him as himself. Well, well it's a hell of a journey to follow. And uh, congratulations on the film. Uh, thanks for talking to Film Ireland. You're very good. Thank, Thank you. Very much. It's past a little schedule for you for me now. Long after I'm gone, the story will be told. This man has incredible weight on his shoulders right now.